All right, good morning, everyone. Um, we are Team High Five. My name is Kainola Gavin. I'm Warren Ching. David Ogato. Shanti Kevin Karoka. And today we'll be presenting on our senior design project, the Vehicle Motion Energy Harvester, as seen up front. All right, so here's a quick overview. First of all, we're going to go over our problem statement, some objectives we had, our design decision, um, the two prototypes you have seen in front, some issues we've had, testing and results, as well as conclusions based off those results, and the next steps of our project. So what's the problem? You guys all drive cars, <coughs> ridden in cars, seen cars go over speed bumps, you know that the cars slow down as they do. When they go over speed bumps, energy is lost, and it's lost as vibration, noise, etc. And so we want to figure out a solution to harvest this lost energy. Um, it's best harvested in low speed, high traffic areas, such as parking lots, garages, uh, schools, gas stations, intersections, etc. And we're, hopefully, we're hoping that um, applications that can be used from this harvested energy can be included to power traffic lights, uh, parking lights, offset maybe local building energy costs, or stored for future use. So our primary objective was to um, design, fabricate, and build, or, and test a vehicle motion energy harvester. Um, we had some key criteria that we would define as successful. Uh, as you can see, the first one here is it must be able to drive over in both directions. Um, that's a safety reason. We want to make sure the car can go over in both ways. Um, we also wanted to have easily removable parts and repairable parts in case anything broke. We can get in there with hand tools, fix it up real quick, replace parts, put it back together, get it working again. Um, we also need to stay within budget. That was a, a huge concern for us, um, for our design process. And we also lastly wanted to make sure it did generate some measurable amount of power. So to generate electricity, we considered using piezoelectrics and hydraulic systems. However, we decided to go with a mechanical system because of its lower costs, greater power output, and its simplicity. So the mechanical system will convert vertical motion into rotational motion, which will then drive an electric generator. The final prototype will be fully functional and will be scaled down to one wheel to fit within our budget. So based off the mechanical system, our group designed a concept prototype which shows the general configuration and operation of our of our energy device. So first, our group had to make the speed bump bi-directional. Therefore, we designed the flap linkages located on the left hand side of the photo. The next thing that we used was the return swings on the right to return the flap back up to the starting position. So here is the general configuration of our concept prototype. First on the left, we have the crankshaft, which, can, which converts vertical motion into rotation motion. Then that's put through a gearbox which increases the rotational speed. Then we have a flywheel with a one-way bearing, so the generator shaft can spin freely and long enough until the next tire comes over the speed bump. And finally on the right, we have a DC motor, which generates the electrical power. So this is our final prototype, as seen here. There are two major components to the final prototype. There's the framing linkages, and there's the drive train. The design process for the Frame and linkages are started with a wooden mock-up, which is, this is just simply a proof of concept. Next, we have a full-size full wooden mock-up. In this, we did a strength analysis of the steel of the frame, and we decided that two-inch steel square tubing would be sufficient to, to carry the dynamic load of a car. We made wooden flaps and linkages to verify our to verify the geometries and our dimensions. Also, <coughs> also in this phase, we decided to go with spring hinges rather than extension springs to lift our flaps. Last is our final prototype. This we finalized our design and we swapped the wood for quarter inch aluminum. We use aluminum because of its lightweight properties and its strength. So here's some pictures of our fabricated linkages. This is us fabricating our, the base plate for the frame. And this is our fabricated flaps. So this is our design process that we took in assembling our drivetrain. First, we have the miniature wooden mock-up, which is the concept, mock, the concept prototype that you guys saw in previous slides. So in here, we use a gearbox with plastic gears. However, the, those plastic gears were very difficult to work with and to replace. Therefore, after what we learned down, we, we devised a full-size wooden gearbox in which 
it used the plastic pulleys and a belt-driven pulley system. We found that it's, it's easy to work with because if, if something breaks, like the belt breaks, we can easily just replace it and slip on an and, and extra belt. Also, we built this wooden gearbox to verify the dimensions and the placement of the pulleys. Next, we, we, we did our full-scale drive chain, in which we still use the plastic pulleys. However, we use steel and aluminum to design the components of our drive chain. After some testing, the plastic pulleys were not durable enough to withstand the load of a car, so we had to order steel pulleys in. So here is the general configuration, which is the crank arms, seen in the top right, with a one-way bearing built into it. Next, that's linked to a speed increase of 48 to 1 gear ratio. And then we have our aluminum flywheel with a one-way bearing embedded into it. And then our salvage scooter motor. Here's just some pictures of fabrication. This is the plasma filling of the steel plates for the gearbox. Here we have the manual machining of our gearbox plates, the sanding of the, of the plasma fitted plates, and then here's just various components that we fabricated in the shop. So here are some of the issues that we ran into during our project. As you can see from the first picture, we managed to break one of our shafts while testing our device. Basically, when we first made this part, we laid, we laid down the shaft to the lower diameter at a kind of sharp angle. Most of us engineers know this as a stress concentration. The way we reduced the stress concentration was just by simply adding a fillet. Another problem we ran into was the breaking of teeth off of our pulley belts. Originally, this belt was a urethane pulley belt. We currently are using a neoprene pulley belt. Basically, the only difference is that our new ones have a little more uh, elastic elasticity to it. Uh, another problem was that we managed to break two drill bits <coughs> in the shop by trying to drill um, really hard steel and there are pretty big holes so um, basically it was spinning at a too high of a spindle rate and it work hardened our hole to the point that our steel plate got harder than the drill bit and uh, <laughs> shredded all of that. And, so thanks to the help of our shop technicians, uh, Jacob, Allen, that they are able to anneal our plate and successfully drill the hole by using a slower speed. Okay. So to test our device, we basically drove over it with a truck and we just built ramps up to our device and drove off onto a curb, as you can see by the picture. This is how we collected our data, basically uh, the electrical output went into an electrical load of 3 ohms for maximum power and then the power and voltage was measured using the DAC instruments and LabVIEW. MATLAB was then used to analyze our results. Here's a little video of us testing our device. These are the results we obtained from our testing. We did basically two sets of tests. The first was by pushing on the device by hand, and the second test, as you saw earlier in the video, was driving over it by car. And in our tests, we used various flywheel configurations. Uh, we used the lightest flywheel, which was a bare aluminum cylinder, and then we progressively added on weights to increase the rotational moment of inertia of the flywheel. And from our data, you can see that the peak power generated uh, by our device decreases as we increase the rotational moment inertia of the flywheel, and we also decrease the total amount of energy that it produces per cycle. And this is a plot of the power, current, and voltage developed by our device as it's being run over by a car. And as you can see, there are two definite spikes of the data, one for each tire. And as the car runs over the device, the motor begins to turn, and we, uh, we see a spike in the power, and it slowly decays as the motor and flywheel decelerate. And this is just a comparison of three different power curves of three different flywheel configurations. So the blue curve is the lightest flywheel, the aluminum cylinder, and then uh, the red and the green are progressively heavier flywheels. And clearly you can see that as we increase flywheel moment of inertia, we decrease the peak power being produced. However, we also increase the length of time that power is being produced. And the total energy being produced, which is the area under the curve, uh, 
also decreases as we increase smoke depth inertia, even though we're increasing the length of time that the motor is turning. And all in all, from our project, we can conclude that it was successful mm -hmm. and that we met all the criteria we set in the beginning of the project. Uh, first of all, we stayed with our budget of $1,200. In fact, we only spent about $900 to build the device. Uh, as you saw from the video, it was functional. We ran over it without breaking it. And when we did break it, we were able to repair it multiple times thanks to uh, easily, easily removable and replaceable parts. And furthermore, from our results slide, you can see that we did produce a measurable amount of electrical power. So the next steps for our project would be to first improve the efficiency. Currently, we calculated a uh, efficiency of 5% compared to a totally ideal case. To improve the efficiency, we'd like to use a DC generator instead of a salvage DC motor scooter. A second would be to have a custom gearbox with an optimized gear ratio. Basically, for our gearbox, we tried to find the best gear ratio that we could find off of the parts given at the MasterCard. Another improvement would be to improve the usability. This means we would like a compact frame and size and a built-in ramp. Essentially, we would like to bolt it into the ground rather than having to dig a hole so that the car can get over it. Uh, lastly would be to weatherproof it. We'd like to take all of these improvements and present them in the 100K challenge to show its feasibility in the real world. All right, and we'd like to acknowledge some people. We'd like to thank Alan and Jacob in the back for helping us build it. Um, Dr. Doty, our industrial or our faculty advisor. Uh, Tim Scheiman, right over there, our industrial advisor. Uh, Dean's office for the funding. Um, IRC Aluminum donated all of our aluminum for us, and Emmy Faculty for all their knowledge. Uh, right now, we'll have a demonstration for you guys of how it works. So we are Team High Five. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 